The goal of investing is to use capital to make more capital. So let's start by addressing some of the needs that a managed product can address. One of the best ways to understand a product is to understand why it exists in the first place. Consider novice investor Patrick, who is investing for retirement. Up until now, he's been saving in a bank account and has managed to accumulate $5,000. Most of the $5,000 is his original principal. The bank account is very safe and pays a relatively low interest rate. In fact, he's losing purchasing power over time because the interest he is earning isn't even keeping up with inflation. This is referred to as inflation rate risk. He's heard that investing in the stock market involves more risk, but also offers a greater potential return. Since he's investing for the long term, he's willing to accept that risk and would like to invest in equities. Let's discuss some of the issues he could face if he tries to invest the money himself. Firstly, which company's share should he buy? There are literally tens of thousands of publicly traded companies around the world. He'd be foolish to just pick companies on a hunch or a whim. For example, even if Coca-Cola is his favorite soft drink, that doesn't necessarily mean it's a good investment today. So he's going to have to do some research. Before building his own portfolio, Patrick is going to have to ask himself the following questions. Does he have the skill to do the required research? Even if he does have the skill, does he have the time? And is the time commitment worthwhile for a relatively small investment? He's also saving $200 per month. Can he invest such a small amount into individual stocks? Finally, Patrick likes to take long vacations. Who would manage his portfolio while he's away? Even if these weren't issues for Patrick, he would still face one major problem. $5,000 is not enough to build a diversified stock portfolio. For example, let's assume that after doing the required research, he believed that shares in the Coca-Cola company would make a great investment. At the time we recorded this video, Coca-Cola shares were trading at around $40 US. Typically, investors like to buy shares in what are called standard trading units, which for stocks is usually 100 shares. So if we take the $5,000 he wants to invest and divide it by a share price of, say, $40 US, he would have enough funds to buy about 100 shares in Coca-Cola, and that's it. That wouldn't be a diversified portfolio at all. What if he's wrong about Coca-Cola? Since he's only invested in one company, if that one company performs poorly, Patrick's portfolio will suffer the same fate. There are different schools of thought as to how many different stocks are required to diversify a portfolio. But for the purposes of this discussion, let's assume it's a minimum of 20 different companies. If Patrick held shares in Coca-Cola and 19 other companies, if his Coca-Cola shares perform poorly, perhaps the gains on his other positions may offset the losses and overall, his portfolio may still have a positive return. Unfortunately, with only $5,000 to invest, Patrick does not have enough capital to build a well-diversified stock portfolio. In the next mini lesson, we'll discuss how investing in a mutual fund or segregated fund, which are examples of managed products, could address the issues Patrick is facing.